Hey everyone, it is Danny, and welcome to this update video this evening. I hope that you guys are doing really great. And so we will be taking a look at what is happening across parts of the Caribbean and surrounding areas. And throughout majority of this video, I will be delving into the updated prediction made by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration or NOAA. And so before I go into details, please do subscribe if you haven't yet done so and tap the bell so that you never miss an important video. All right, now as we take a look at the satellite imagery across the uh, Caribbean, here we can see that there is that area of lots of showers and thunderstorms being induced by uh, the tropical wave in the region. So lots of showers throughout today for parts of Hispaniola, especially the Dominican Republic. And uh, in the afternoon hours, we see that there's a lot going on for Haiti as well. And those periods of heavy rainfall could be triggering some flooding there. Hopefully everyone is doing okay. We also see some thunderstorms popping up across parts of eastern Cuba as well as Jamaica and even near the Cayman Islands especially Grand Cayman and also over to some spots in Central America especially close to the Pacific coast of the different territories there. Now across most of the eastern islands parts of Puerto Rico the Virgin Islands Lesser Antilles there isn't much happening and that is as a result of uh, things being a bit more stable there so not seeing too much going on. Uh, same story for the ABC Islands Aruba Curacao and Bonaire which have not been experienced in anything significant for a while now as we head to northern South America and even going into parts of Panama, Costa Rica, there is some thunderstorm activity developing for some spots which could continue to increase as we head through today and also across some parts of Trinidad. The thing different is with this year so we're in an el nino uh, which is the warm phase of a phenomenon known as the enso or el nino southern oscillation now when it is warmer over there in the eastern equatorial pacific that usually helps to kick up the wind shear and that is something that tropical cyclones hate so the wind shear it really helps to rip them apart and prevent them from growing or intensifying so uh during an el nino we usually see less activity across the Atlantic but something unusual was being observed and that is anomalous warming yes it was getting warmer over there but it was also getting warmer over in the Atlantic basin and so signs were pointing towards the possibility of seeing an above average hurricane season for that reason the prediction at the time was 12 to 17 named storms of which 5 to 9 could become hurricanes and 1 to 4 major hurricanes and in terms of the probability of seeing an above normal near normal or below normal season there was a tie with an above or below normal season so the possibility or the probability of seeing both was at 30% each. Meanwhile, a 40% chance slightly higher for seeing a near normal season. And an average hurricane season produces about 40 named storms, of which seven become hurricanes and three major hurricanes. So an above average season is more than that number. And the closer we get, that is increasing the probability of a near normal season. And so now we have seen it. July was record breaking in terms of the heat and across the Atlantic and even produced, or June rather, even produced two named storms in the main development region, uh, which were Brett and Cindy. And that was record breaking. Since dawn, uh, we haven't seen anything across the main development region. Now, what is the culprit? Well, that is the Saharan air layer. It induces these dry, stable conditions because these thunderstorms that develop, they depend on instability. It's instability that produces these thunderstorms. So without that, then we're not going to see much become of the tropical waves moving across the main development region and that is between the Caribbean and the coast of Africa where we tend to see the most activity during the hurricane season so back in May things were looking to be quite interesting and now here we are in August a couple months later and NOAA released their updated prediction today calling for an above average hurricane season look at the significant increase in the probability of seeing an above average 
uh, or above normal season. A 60% chance, the greatest probability uh, out of the three. A 25% chance of seeing a near normal season and a 15% chance of a below normal season. So despite the El Nino, because of the incredible warming across the Atlantic, even the Gulf of Mexico is staggering. It is sweltering over there with temperatures up to 32 degrees in some spots across the Gulf. Other areas, the Caribbean off the southeast coast near the Bahamas, very warm waters to support development and significant intensification as well. Now in terms of the number of storms, hurricanes and majors, those have also increased. 14 to 21 named storms of which 6 to 11 could become hurricanes and 2 to 5 major hurricanes. Now, the worst case scenario in terms of these numbers would be seeing 21 named storms, 11 hurricanes, and five major hurricanes. That would be absolutely catastrophic, provided the storms actually affect different areas. And that seems like a very high probability. Somewhere will be affected, and there are going to be multiple cycles affecting different areas. Why I say this is because of what is typical. As we look at this map here, showing what we typically see in August, we can see most of the systems come from these tropical waves that encounter conducive conditions as they make their way westward they may move into the Caribbean head into the Gulf or even move north of the Caribbean and head into the US or they can even stay out to sea and just be fish storms that is the most ideal scenario out there but that is not likely for every single storm in the month of September things ramp up that is the peak month when we see the most activity across the Atlantic Basin and it's not only NOAA by the way many organizations are expecting that this hurricane season might be one for the record books to say it's an El Nino season producing so much activity some sources calling for 20 25 named storms 18 named storms so we can see that things are not shaping up to be very pretty for the next couple of weeks and only time will tell and models are still hinting at that system as we head to the latter part of next week go into the following week and only time will tell what's going to be happening but they have been consistent about it and of course I'm here to keep you posted stick with me and we're gonna get through this hurricane season together and that is pretty much what I wanted to share with you in this update and I hope you found it to be uh, to be quite informative but if you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comments. I will respond once I get the chance and as always remember to be weather wise.